Stand by. Roll the paper. Keep your time code. 39, 40. Okay. These guys are we so good. Oh, yeah. I've trained them well. Good. <laughs> Welcome home, Thank Bill Paxton. You. It's great to be back in Texas, Bobby. Oh, so I've nice. been looking forward to this ever since they called. I said, put me at the top of the list. And well, they did. <laughs> I'm glad they did. I am so happy for you, the greatest game ever played. I like this movie, and I am so happy to recommend it, Bill. Well, thank you, Bobby. We're really proud of it. All of us have made it. For me, it's kind of a love letter to growing up near Shady Oaks Country Club in Fort Worth, Texas, and, and also kind of it represents my love affair with the movies. It started when my dad would take me and my brother down to the Worth Theater or the Palace or one of those theaters, and we'd come out of the movies, and my dad would be talking about the lighting or the art direction. And so. I guess from an early age, I had kind of this, this, this kind of, uh, you know, I had a sense of the, what it, what went into making a movie, and I guess I became fascinated with that. Obviously, I did. I got into it. When you were playing golf and interested in golf, did you know who Francis We Met was? No, I didn't. I absolutely did not. And I, I, I but I love this story. When I read Mark Frost's book, I, I became just enamored with it, and I thought. What a great opportunity. Here's an original story that's one of the great underdog stories of American sports history, and no one's made a movie of it. And I also saw an opportunity as a filmmaker to, to kind of light this game up like no one had ever seen in a movie. So it was kind of a challenge, but it was a, it was a lot of fun. I love the way that you have filmed the golf portions of it. Otherwise, it would look like ESPN on Sunday afternoon. Absolutely, yes. I, you know, you, you know, it's a pastoral sport to most people who watch it casually. I really was making this movie not for golfers, but for the for the person who sees it on TV and thinks it's about as exciting as watching paint dry. But if you're playing on a championship level. I uh, love a Tiger Woods or a Phil Mickelson, and you know these guys are more. Like, I see them more like modern-day gunfighters. You know, it's a kill or be killed situation. It's a sudden death playoff, and so we kind of added a little tombstone to the movie. And then I wanted to get the audience a feeling of what it must be like to to as Francis we met Shia LaBeouf's character walking into this tournament as this young you know amateur, and the nerves of getting up in front of these great champions and trying to compete. So we created these kind of Alfred Hitchcock kind of vertigo moments, and then we contrasted that with Harry Varden, who was the Ben Hogan of his day, or the Tiger Woods of his day. He was a guy who came from modest circumstances to become probably the greatest player that England ever produced. And when we're in his mind, it's suddenly like being in the Terminator's head. You know, <laughs> he, he can just make every, all the people, all the sound, everything just disappears. And then the way we shot the movie, we wanted to fly with the ball and see what, what, is a, what does an ant see when it, when a ball goes by. We, we, we pretty much threw a lot of cool stuff into the thing, yeah. Did you dig trenches for your cinematographer? Oh, yeah, and we put a lot of them up on scaffolding. Well, it has a great look, and, and some innovative shots, uh, the, the likes of which I haven't seen before, so. We did a lot of planning. We planned the movie for 10 months before we started shooting it, so I, I had a chance to do a lot of storyboards, because I knew the golf was going to be a challenge. Like, like you just said, you know, to most people it looks like a you know, it's a sport played out in a park-like environment, and you know, they're, okay, they're going to hit the ball, then they're going to walk up to it, and they're going to hit it again. So in a film, you can compress time and space any way you want. So I was able to kind of take the fat out of it and really just give you the intense moments. Are there any similarities between you and Francis we met? I think so. I'm, I'm an underdog like Francis. You know, I, I went out to California with a dream to work in the motion picture business. And I think I had, what I had going for me was the, the naivete and the innocence of youth. I went out to California when I was 18 years old. I started working as a set dresser, you know, behind the scenes, building sets. And I, I didn't really know what I was up against. I didn't know how insurmountable the wall was. If, I think if I would have waited 10 more years, I would have never gone to California. I think in the interim, going from 18 to 28, the realities of, of, of life and, and the economics of life, I probably wouldn't have made the trip. And, but like Francis, he was up against the incredible social boundaries of the day. He was this immigrant son. He was a caddy. Caddies didn't play golf. It was an amateur sport. It was played by the privileged, the wealthy. And so he was breaking kind of social barriers by trying to compete in this game. 
And on top of that, at home, he, he got it from his dad. His dad had this working class mentality, almost a reverse classicism. Like those people never work a day in their life. I, I, I earn honest money by the sweat of my, you know, my brow. And uh, so he kind of was a guy who also had the innocence of youth and the naivete to not even know what he was up against. I don't think he would have won the tournament without the 10-year-old caddy. Now, a lot of people see the movie and they think that's a, it's like a, he's like the 10-year-old Eddie Lowry is like an invention out of central casting. But he was, he was a real guy uh, and he was, this, he was 10 years old. His brother, Jack Lowry, was 16. He was supposed to carry Francis's bag on the day of the first round. He got caught by a truant officer cutting school. So Eddie, the 10-year-old, came to tell Francis, my brother got caught, but I'll carry your bag. And Francis was like, gee, Eddie, I appreciate you coming, but I don't think it's going to work out. And, and Eddie was like, no, I can help you. I, I know your game. I can give you good advice. And there was a time, that's, it's in the book, it's not really in the... Um, it's not in the movie, but, the, but at, at a certain point, when Francis started, started getting into contention, he started getting nervous, Eddie said to him, he said, well, Francis, did you really even think you'd get this far? And Francis had to admit, no, I really didn't, Eddie. He goes, well, there you go. Come on, let's just go play the game. But I believe that 10-year-old caddy helped Francis keep his nerves in control so that he could compete and win this Open. The guy who plays uh, Eddie, uh, you know what a scene stealer. He should oh, be arrested he is. for scene stealing. He is, but the, you know the part was there. If we could get the right actor, we knew it was a scene stealing part. But I love the way uh, Shia LaBeouf and Josh Flitter is, is Eddie is, is the real guy. How they got along on the set, and, and Francis did. Was, I mean, Shia was kind of like a big brother to, to Josh, and they had they got a, they've actually become great friends. And it, it was it, the movie did imitate life in, in a way. Here was Shia LaBeouf, a young actor coming into his own, and I, I threw him into the polar bear cage. The actors that are in this movie, Stephen Delane, who plays Harry Varden, here's a British actor who's done Hamlet, Macbeth at the National Theater. I mean, and so I'm putting this young performer, from, I mean, there, it was the same dynamic as Francis and Harry Varden. There's the great scene in, where Francis is washing his face in the locker room, and he looks up, and he hears another guy at the other base, and he looks up. And God, there's Harry Varden, this guy that he met when he was seven years old, and he's he's speechless. He doesn't even know how to talk to the guy. And it was and Shy was a little bit like that around Stephen. I have to uh, jump forward sure. quickly. What is this movie you're going to do about polygamy? Oh my gosh! <laughs> now wait a second. Uh, I, I, uh oh! Wait a minute. <laughs> I just, I've just shot my first season of a sh new show called Big Love, and it's being produced by Tom Hanks, and it's going to air on HBO starting in January. And in it, I play opposite Gene Triplehorn from Tulsa and uh, Chloe Sevigny and a gal named Jennifer Goodwin. She's got Walk the Line coming out. And I'm married to all three of them. We're living in Utah, uh, and uh, it's... I got my hands full, Bobby. <laughs> I got my hands full. I'll be honest with you. I'm, little, I'm in a little bit over my head. This old, you know, I think my character's name should be called Jack Rabbit. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't mean to, to hit you on the no, blind side. No, I'm with actually this. really proud of it. We just finished. We just finished about a week and a half ago shooting our first season. There are 12 one-hour episodes that'll be out in January. And, we're all very excited about it. Harry Dean Stanton's in it, Mary Kay Place, another Tulsa gal, um, Bruce Dern, Grace Zabriskie. It's a, it's a hell of a show. And Tom Hanks is producing it. He's producing it, his company Playtone, yes. So was it your friendship where he came to you and said, would you No, not this? really. He was kind of off doing something, and I was in pre-production. This was, uh, I did the pilot in the spring of, of last year. And we were, we, I was already planning to make this, and when my agent sent me the script, I said, how am I going to do this? He said, well, just read it. And I read it, and I went, how, how can we make this work? And it just worked out. I was able to shoot the pilot, then go off and, and direct this. And then by the time I got into post-production, they were ready to start their season. So it's, it's been a busy year for me. Kind of a, I'm kind of doubling down this year. So how's the Mormon Church going to react to this? Well, I, I, I you know, I'm, I'm playing someone who has a, I'm not a, I'm not a Mormon in the, in the series. I, I come from, a, I'm an ex-Mormon, really. And uh, 
But we're not playing the series with, with any judgment. or uh, We're playing these people in this situation. It's, it's, a, it's a heightened reality, I mean, because we're kind of living under the radar. But it's, it's, you'll, you'll see that these people are very human, and they, and they, and they, have all, they make all the mistakes we all make. So I, I don't know. I, I don't, we're not, it's not, I mean, we're, I mean, we're really playing these people in an earnest way. We're not judging these people. I'm, I've been playing the guy as, as a guy who's a God-fearing person. He's trying to be a good hus husband. <laughs> my, he's trying to be a good husband, too. Let me run that by again. You know, I'm, I'm playing a God-fearing uh, man who's trying to be a good husband to his wives and uh, being a good father to all his children. And uh, it's going it, it's, it's, it's to be interesting. It's, it's provocative, but it's original, and, and I think it's, 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 it's got a lot of humor. We've got a lot of humor in it. Well, if anybody can pull that off, you, Bill Paxton, well. <laughs> can. <laughs> I know you can. I know you can. Oh. No, you're Mr. Everyman. You really I, I, I guess I am, Bobby. Yeah. I, I relate to people. My father, he's with me on the trip. He's been, we've been going city to city. We're trying to do a little barnstorming, trying to create some awareness for the film and also let people know it, it's not about, it's a golf, it's set in this world of, of this, this kid wins this championship, but it's really more about the class struggle and, and it's about character, it's about class. You know, someone, it's not who your father was or how much money you have, it's who you are that determines character and class. And, and the story has more of a, has more of a, I, I'd say it's more a cross between Rocky and uh, Chariots of Fire. And so, I'm, and, P, and women love this movie. Well, Usually they I, hate their men, they're out playing golf. I enjoyed it tremendously, oh, and as I said in the beginning, I am so happy to recommend this film. Thank it's you. Rated PG, by the way. Yes, and it's and it's PG with no bars. There's no language. It's it, it didn't it didn't need it. I didn't have to compromise the movie because it was being made for Walt Disney. This was a story that was inherently a great human interest story, and it had and it had great suspense. It kind of plays out like an Apollo 13. You might know the ending, but, but the, the journey there is, is, is amazing. It's an amazing journey. Bill Paxton, they're ready to get the hook. <laughs> Great to see you. Good to see you.